<laughs> Yo, can you help me what? find the newest and coolest uh, camera technologies? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's like that way in some direction that way somewhere. All right, thanks, man. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, it. Have fun. Enjoy. We are here in Las Vegas for NAB. Uh, I don't actually remember what NAB stands for. Nas National, Associ National Association of Broadcast. I don't know what it stands for, but um, I'm always excited to see what kind of gear is coming out because it usually makes my life as a filmmaker more exciting and easier in a lot of ways. And I can do more things with that technology. So. Uh, First cool piece of new tech. Well, it's not really that techy, but it's cool. I got this right before I left. New ND filters, but not just any ND filters. Peter McKinnon ND filters. My best friend literally has his own variable ND filters and they're super high quality, which makes it even better. I also like that they made a cap for it. I usually just have an ND filter on my camera all the time. And um, yeah, it's nice to have a cap for it so it doesn't get all scratched up in my bag. Also, I always, always forget something. This time I'm shooting on the Sony a7 III just, just for fun. And uh, of course, the Gorillapod head thing. The mount is on my Canon. Dang it. Ah. Had to improvise with this box. All right, let's go find out what's the newest and coolest tech. All right, so we're gonna go check out some uh, some of the newest and coolest tech. Gene here's gonna show me Potato Jet. If you guys don't subscribe, you should subscribe. Uh, we're gonna go check out some of the stuff here at NAB. Your first year, right? Yeah, this is a uh, this is crazy. Just like all everywhere you look, there's something. Are you feeling crazy overwhelmed going, already? A little bit. Like there's a guy with a giant steady cam gimbal just walking around right there. It's, it's just that's just like normal. Apparently, that's just a normal thing that just happens here. It's just, okay. <laughs> I remember when I came here last time, I was so overwhelmed. There's just way, way too much stuff, and half the companies I haven't even heard of. So it's <laughs> yeah, interesting. <laughs> Okay, so this is actually day three of my NAB trip and the last day I'm going home today. I think I'm losing my voice a little bit, been talking too much. <coughs> Got that deep voice going on. So let's talk about some of the coolest things that I saw at NAB 2019. And first off, we have to talk about the 8K Sharp camera. This thing's just like, did Sharp even make cameras before this? I don't, I've never even heard of a Sharp camera. Um, and they come out with this 8K camera for under $4,000, which is crazy. And I, at first I thought it was just like, you know, like, oh, in the future, years from now, we will have this 8K camera, but they were showing the footage on an 8K monitor. They were actually gonna let me take it out and film a little bit, I just didn't have time. Hoping they can send it to me uh, and let me review it, test it out. But 8K, I don't even film in 4K most of the time. I'm filming 4K right now. But most of the time, I don't even film in 4K. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with 8K, but I think I want it anyways. And on top of that, look at this freaking LCD screen. It's a flip LCD screen. It was massive. It was like this big, probably the biggest flip LCD screen I've ever seen. Um, so I, I'm definitely a fan. Very curious to see what is this camera gonna be like. Um, yeah, check it out. What do you think, Gene? I want it. <laughs> you want 8K, eh? Yeah. No, not well, maybe. <laughs> Phil, what do you think about 8K? 8K is, is the natural progression from oh, of course. 4K. You would only shoot an 8K, right? I haven't I haven't shot any 8K. This is my first 8K first ever. First time. How does it feel? I did try a few weeks ago with the Fran and didn't get a frame. So I'm actually, this is, I'm losing my virginity right now. Oh, oh gosh. 
family friendly on my channel, family friendly. Guys, I'm vlogging in 8K. How is, what, what is this lens, Philip? It's a 7 to 14 Olympus, I think. It's so wide. This is perfect for vlogging. It's all you need. This, all you, you don't need. need any stabilizer, no, no gorilla pod, hey, no going, nothing. Hey. It's perfect. Can you send me this footage? I can, yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm hoping I can get my hands on it pretty soon and uh, get some real world experience with it. Then Tiffin had this pretty interesting steady cam thing called the Steadymate S, and it's basically built for your Ronin S, so you can have this vest with the arm and then have your Ronin on there. And that way you can film for way longer with a gimbal, even though the Ronin S isn't massive, but it still weighs enough with a bigger camera that you're gonna get tired. With this, because the weight is on your body through that vest, you can basically film all day long. Plus with the arm, it cuts down that up and down movement that you get with gimbals a lot of times, especially the smaller ones. So yeah, I thought this was a really interesting way to mix kind of uh, technology that we've had for a really long time with Steadicams um, with the new technology of gimbals. Aperture never disappoints. They always have some really cool stuff at NAB. And I guess I can just let the man himself tell you guys about that stuff. Dude, what? High fives. What do you have new for me this oh, year? We got all kinds of new stuff. This we guy always has. This, this guy mm -hmm. never disappoints. Mm -hmm. NAB might stuff. disappoint sometimes, yeah. but Ted doesn't disappoint. Uh, my voice is dead, so that's disappointing <laughs> to people. As that's a straight every up year, every Number year. Number one disappointment <laughs> off that day two voice gone. Every year he loses his voice here. <laughs> you know, this is All right, very well, true. what's new? Can you tell me oh, now, or man. do we have to wait tonight? Yeah, we can walk over. There's a couple secret announcements okay. though that I can't go over right now. We'll okay. see those in a little bit. All right, so I know a lot of people are asking about the new RGB light. This thing is so bright. It's right Turn here. it down. It's super Turn bright. it down. Dad. I'm turning it down. <laughs> I'm trying. It's too bright. I'm to tilt this to the side. <laughs> All right. This is, no, get out of the way. I don't want to look at it. Okay. Anyways, this is our RGB light. This right here is actually brighter than an S30. It's also significantly better in terms of color quality than an S30 as well. So this right here is our idea. We're trying to bring RGB lights to indie filmmakers. Heck, yes. Trying to make something robust, durable. It's by far the heaviest aperture light that we have. It's serious. It's supposed to be able to go into three ton, five ton grip trucks. Um, again, color quality. You can also color pick with it too. So I can actually find colors around here. Like Maddie wears a lot of black, but this green. <laughs> I don't. I don't really wear colors, so I'm not. I'm not this really the best example. But he's got a badge here, so I could grab this green if I wanted to, and my light would actually automatically replicate that color in real time. Yeah. Yeah, so this will be able to color pick. I got hue, full hue saturation control, and this is a light that's gonna be priced at, we think, about $1,500. So, Ooh. this should be a light that's actually affordable for indie filmmakers. It's not $4,500 like a lot of the higher end competition. This should be something that indie filmmakers can own and operate, and that studio filmmakers can use and respect as well. Coming out pretty soon this summer, 2019. Can I just take this one? Uh, no, absolutely no, I'll not. Just take this one. This, no, take, no, get away. <laughs> This right here is the 300D Mark II. Ooh, Mark II, eh? Mark II, 20% brighter than the previous one. 7.5 meter long cable, so now I can leave this thing onto the floor, rig it up on a menace arm, throw it out, not a problem. 20% brighter, same build, same yoke. 360 rotation, I can spin this thing all the way around now. Mm -hmm. Controller box and ballast now built into one. Maddie, were you having some problems with your controller box and ballast being separate? Yep, he's nodding. He's nodding, this is true, yeah. absolutely. So, controller box is now built into one. It's now one quick release plate, so I can snap this thing on and off. Take batteries on and off. It's actually smaller than the previous controller box, so basically the battery mounts go on opposite sides. They don't stack on top of each other anymore, so it's a lot thinner. It's actually lighter weight. There's no fans in this thing, all passive cooling. Built-in effects. And take a look at that on the top. Antennas are built in, and that right there is actually Wi-Fi. So this is an app-controlled light as well. Ooh. So you can control the entire thing from your phone. Ooh. Now, I've <laughs> always loved the fact that you guys have the little remote, yes. but that's even better. Yeah, and get ready. Get ready for tomorrow, because there's still some secret stuff that's still on its way out. Secret I stuff yeah. now. Uh, I actually didn't bring my camera to the the dinner where they unveiled some new stuff, but I'll let you guys know here what they unveiled. So basically they have a new version of the M9, which is like their like credit card sized light, which I use all the time. I have a whole bunch of them um, in the background of my studio where I film. You wanna have teal or orange or red light, whatever color, there's party effects. So you wanna, you wanna have a cop car effect or lightning or paparazzi, you can do all of that. 
So I'm very excited for that. They also made this new, it basically just looks like a normal light bulb, but it's again RGB, so you can do any color you want. And it has an internal battery, so you don't have to plug it in, but you can use these lights for really nice practical effects. So practicals are lights that are in your frame. Um, and again, you can choose any color you want. But the most interesting and exciting thing I think that they're coming out with real soon I've always been a massive fan of the fact that they have a remote to control all of their lights. Well, they're stepping that up and they've made an app that you can connect to, I think it was some ridiculous amount of lights, like 60,000 lights at once and control them all from your phone. So there's like this network that's created from your phone and all the lights, they're all talking to each other and you can control intensity, color, the party effects, all of that stuff straight from your phone and you can have your own profile. So if you go to your friend's place and they have some aperture lights, you can just use your profile to control all of those lights. I don't even know what to say really. That makes my life way easier and way more fun to work with lights. And they even made a way for it to work with the older lights, all the lights that I have right now, those are also gonna be the ones that are remote controlled. Those are also gonna be able to work with this new app. So I'm just really, really excited to try that out. It's gonna be a million times better than having the remote, which was already really great. I really liked having the remote. So uh, yeah, Aperture never disappoints at NAB. Then I got to see the Nikon RAW, uh, some sample footage that was really interesting. And they, they, they said I might be might be able to get my hands on that uh, in the near, near future, but they, they couldn't make any promises, but I hope so. They also released their fastest lens ever. It's the Noct 58mm f0.95. That's how fast it is. This lens was insane. Even when a subject or the person was way farther out, you were still getting crazy shallow depth of field. Uh, yeah, they were saying basically because of the, the bigger mount, new mount on the Z6 and Z7, uh, they can make lenses like this. So that was really interesting. But by far, the coolest tech at NAB was, well, this. Am I doing it, Gene? You're doing it. You're very, you're, you're, I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. Best tech at NAB 2019. Right here. Pretty cool, right? Okay, jokes aside, uh, Atomos had some really cool stuff coming out. Um, probably the, the the most interesting for me was the new Shogun 7. So the Shogun is kind of like the big brother to the Ninja 5 that I've shown on my channel. So it does a lot of the same things as the Ninja 5, but the monitor on this one is crazy. It's hard to even explain. There's new 360 backlight zone system. Uh, it's just stuff that I, I don't fully understand, but when you see the monitor, uh, yeah, the quality is crazy. It's the, like it's like the the most HDR I've seen on a monitor. Uh, yeah, and also you can input four different HD sources, so you could have four different cameras bringing in their signals into this Shogun and be switching between the cameras and recording all of those sources at the same time. I'm definitely going to be using this for our podcast. Then I saw the most giant LED light I've ever seen in my life. Um, it was a 20K Mole Richardson LED light. Um, if you're wondering why would you ever need a light like this? Well, basically they're used to simulate the sun. They're so strong that it looks like sunlight. So, uh, you know, for commercials, for TV shows, for movies, a lot of times they're putting in a, a fake sun using these insanely powerful lights. And this one's really interesting because you can actually run it just off of two household circuits. So you don't need a crazy amount of power to uh, power this light. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. Do you think it's overkill for your studio though? No, no man. man my, I mean, maybe for a small YouTube channel, but I'm like, like a lot of YouTubes. <laughs> Gene's pretty big time. <laughs> needs a big time light. And then we have the Z cam. So I first saw the Z cam when Philip Bloom posted a little video from it. They've had the E2, which is a micro four thirds sensor. It does 120 frames per second in 4K. ProRes, a very interesting camera for under $2,000. Well, now they're doing a Super 35 6K, 6K for $4,000. And this camera is like tiny. It doesn't have an LCD screen, but it's small. It's like a little bit bigger than a GoPro. It's like this little cube. 
and it's doing it's gonna do 6k 6k not only that they're doing a full frame version that's gonna do 8k for six thousand dollars and they're apparently gonna do raw and pro res there's like i don't i don't even understand um i really want to try them out just because it almost seems too good to be true there has to be some sort of drawback or something that doesn't work exactly like they're saying i've, I've talked about specs versus reality um but yeah i'm very curious it's really interesting to see all these AK cameras and all of this stuff. I guess that's where we're going. I mean, logical progression. But for me, I think the coolest part about NAB was just hanging out with people, meeting you guys, a lot of you guys I met, um, and then just meeting other creators. There's like a whole bunch of really cool people I met. Ryan Connolly from Film Riot. I've been watching his stuff for like ever. I've learned so much. I met some of the Corridor Digital guys. Just a lot of really interesting people. And that has been my favorite part about NAB. I mean, tech is cool too, but uh, I think the people are a little bit cooler. Anyways, I have to pack now. I gotta get on an airplane and I gotta get home to see my kid and wife. That makes me very excited. Okay, see you guys. I need this. <laughs> I oh, need is, this. Is this a want or a need? This is a need. Oh, this is a need yes. for sure. This is, yeah.